Hello lovely viewers, you are most welcome to our channel Poetry Online. In this video, we shall be discussing A Minor Bird by Robert Frost. Kindly subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get updates on all our new videos. Once again, let us assure you of a very interesting discussion. Get ready for this lesson. A Minor Bird is a poem written by Robert Frost. Robert Frost was born in 1874 in San Francisco, California. He is regarded as one of America's respected poets and one of the greatest poets of the 20th century. Although the poem seems to be talking about a bird, who our poetic speaker thinks is disturbing him with his unnecessary noise, the message of a minor bird goes beyond just discussing the singing of birds to deeper issues, which reflects the nature of some people in this world. Most people, especially those who are privileged in the society, sometimes wrongly accuse the less privileged and vulnerable in the society. Almost everywhere in the world, people are intolerant to one another's view, especially when they think they are more powerful or have a stronger willpower than others. The result of this is that People are disrespected, looked down upon, underrated, underappreciated, and prevented from doing things that make them happy, when indeed the perpetrators may not have any tangible reason to hate or disrespect them. A minor bird uses simple language and expression which can easily be understood by everyone, irrespective of a person's age or educational level to address serious issues in the society. Let's now take a deeper analysis of the lines contained in the poem. I have wished a bird would fly away and not sing by my house all day. The poem opens with our poetic speaker wishing that a bird should not perch near his house and sing all day long. This line reveals the setting of the poem which is a rural settlement, since we find evidence of a natural environment from the tree to the bird perching on the tree. The speaker seems not to be happy with the noise made by the bird since he can bear it no longer. Here, the question we all may be tempted to ask is, how loud is the singing of a bird? How disturbing can sound coming from a bird be? And why should the speaker be bothered about the songs of a little bird or a minor bird? The answers to this question will help us to better understand the poem. Let's continue with our analysis. Have clapped my hands at him from the door, when it seems as if I could bear no more. Here, our poetic speaker tells us that, in an attempt to drive the bird away, he clapped his hands. This bed we see in the poem represent all the minors and vulnerable people in the society, people who are less privileged, and how others try to silence them and blame them unnecessarily. Instead of enjoying the melodious song coming from the bed, the speaker only rejects the song and considers the song disturbing because it is coming from a minor or less privileged. The fault must partly have been in me. The bird was not to blame for his key. Here, our poetic speaker takes a deeper meditation on his actions and realizes that he has no tangible reason to stop the bird from singing, for the bird committed no offense. He then felt apologetic and regrets that he tried to drive away an innocent and harmless bird this line draws our attention to the fact that sometimes the accusers and persecutors are wrong in their accusation and persecution since some of their actions are not rational. The speaker then blames himself for making such a wrong conclusion about the bird, for the bird is not supposed to be blamed for its note of musical pitch. This line can equally be interpreted as one cannot be blamed for the way he or she was created, 
for we have no say in our creation process. Hence, the bed cannot be blamed for his key. And of course, there must be something wrong in wanting to silence in a song. In the last two lines of the poem, the poet further clears the bed of any wrongdoing, just as the poet wrongly accused the bed for making unnecessary noise. So are innocent, minors, and less privileged people blamed and accused wrongly. The speaker goes on to inform the readers that it is unnecessary to silence the bird from singing. The mood of the poem is apologetic. That is, the speaker initially tried to drive away an innocent bird from enjoying itself. He then regrets any prejudice he may have harbored about the minor bird and admitting his wrongdoing. The major themes we come across in this poem include the following. 1. Accusers may also be wrong. 2. Accepting one's mistake. 3. We should not use our power to disturb others. What we have learned from this poem is that the speaker realizes his mistakes and is ready to accept responsibility for wrongly blaming the innocent and harmless bird. Thanks for watching this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share this video.